insights uh, are constitutive of the modern structures of knowledge. Okay, so we're talking about uh, we're talking about the genocide epistemics against Muslim and Jews in the conquest of Al-Andalus. We're talking about genocide epistemicide against indigenous people in the Americas. And we're talking about genocide epistemicide against African people, their mass kidnapping of African people and transportation by force to the Americas to be enslaved in the Americas. Then you have a fourth genocide epistemicide, which is the burning alive of women accused of being witches. My thesis is that the structures of knowledge of the modern world has been built upon the shoulders of these four genocides, epistemicides. This is the point I'm trying to say. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so basically, I'm going to go over a narrative okay, of this genocide epistemicide. I already discussed Al-Andalus. I mentioned, you know, how they, they were uh, exterminating people and burning the libraries, okay? And I mentioned last time how, just to give you an, a, a, a sense of how the unequal relationship with structures of knowledge between Islamic civilization in the south of what we call today Spain and northern Europe is that at the time when they were burning these libraries, okay, the the Library of Cordoba has more than half a million books. The Library of Granada has more than 250,000 books. The largest library in Christendom Europe did not have 1,000 books. That just the numbers tell you something. There's something, there's something going on here that doesn't make sense, no? Christendom Europe did not have libraries as large as this, as Al-Andalus. Al-Andalus has, and I explained last time, and I cannot repeat that, that the foundation of modern European philosophy and modern European sciences is what I call epistemic extractivism. The appropriation of European white men of the knowledges coming from Islamic civilization erasing the memory of where they got it, and then claiming authorship over the theories. I call it epistemic extractivism. Like extractivist industries, they go and extract oil or extract diamonds or gold or silver. We're talking about an industry of knowledge extractivism, epistemic extractivism. And then when they, re they, they narrate the history of science, it's a racist, sexist history of science. White men discover everything. In fact, they plagiarize a lot of the early modern scientists of Europe, including Copernicus, they all plagiarize Islamic scientists from Islamic civilization, who has discovered all the, all these theories were already discovered several hundred years before. So the debt of Europe with Islamic civilization is huge. Why I'm focusing on Islamic civilization? Because they were at the borders. That's why I am, that's why Islam was so influential because they, have, they were first, they have a well-developed a, a technology, science, philosophy, all this kind of thing, because there was no obscurantism in Islamic civilization like it was in Christendom Europe. The relationship between spirituality and science was not in conflict, was not a dualistic structure. I explained all of that in my first lecture. Check the audio, the audio, whenever it's uploaded, okay? <laughs> and so I hope that when it's uploaded, it's sent by email to everybody here in this class, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, so I cannot go in detail of, on all of that, so just to say that then, by the end of the 15th century, here comes Columbus, okay, with the enterprise of the Indies, which was a document that he, that he produced, okay, to convince the king and the queen of the Spanish 
Christian monarchy to go over the Atlantic to, the, to India. Okay, to India. And basically in the first meeting, they said to him, this is great, but you need to wait until the fall of Al-Andalus because we want to unify the Iberian Peninsula under one kingdom, one people, one population, one identity, one religion. Sound familiar? That's the seeds of what is called later the nation state. It began in the conquest of Al-Andalus. I also explained that last time in the other lecture. So the nation state, come, that's why the word historical significance of Al-Andalus is fundamental. You don't know that history, I would say you're at least half lost into what is happening today. Because a lot of things that are happening today were already re, you know, rehearsed from there. Okay? And a lot of the structural domination of today are coming from that history that later were extrapolated elsewhere. Okay? So, uh, <coughs> so what you have is, uh, so bear with me because I'm going to, to, to give the answer why we have the, such racist, sexist structures of knowledge. Uh, but I will need to go over a, a, a historical narrative uh, that seems as if I, I got lost, okay? But, uh, but you see that everything will fall in place later, okay? So, so here is Columbus, okay? So he, he said, okay, you cannot do this now, you have to wait. And there was the last remaining part of Islamic civilization in uh, Al-Andalus, you know, in, in, in the south of what we call today Spain, uh, that was Granada. And there was a 10-year war, okay? And to make a long story short, Granada fell January 2nd, 1492. Okay? January 2nd, 1492 is the fall of Granada. Columbus was a few kilometers away in Santa Fe, where the uh, Spanish army was there settled, you know, and he was there waiting for the fall of Granada. Because the queen, remember, have, and the king have said, okay, you need to wait until the fall of Granada to come here, okay? And, and, and follow your, this plan. Uh, it's called Enterprise of the Indies because first Columbus was going with maps, okay? This is another mythology of Eurocentric thinking that we need to demolish. This idea that people in America were primitive people isolated from the world and all this stuff, this is, this is you know, a lot of lies that have been narrated to us, you know, these were very advanced civilizations, way advanced than anything you can imagine in Europe at the time. And the best thing for you to know about what was going on there is when you read the letters sent by the first Spanish colonizers who arrived to the Aztecs, or who arrived to the Incas, or who arrived at the letter, read those letters. Okay, when you read those letters, these people were like, wow, you know? And they were eager to conquer, because it was very wealthy civilizations, way more abundant than anything. So they were, like, astonished to what they were seeing, because there was nothing like this. Just to give you an example, the, Aztec, the city of the Aztec had close to half a million people. The largest city in Europe at the time was 60,000 people. And they were dying of plagues because they did not have the sewage and water system. Okay? And they were dying of plague. Here you have a civilization with half a million people in a city and with no plagues. Okay? Or Cordoba, that was the center of, of Al-Andalus, had one million people. Okay? With no plagues. Now, Europe couldn't have 60,000 people in a place without a plague, okay? Just to give you an example of how backward was, at the time, Christian in Europe, okay? And, and so, what, when, when these people came to America, they saw that these were very advanced. Later comes the fairy tale and start saying, oh, these are primitive people, these are monkeys climbing, climbing in trees, uh, we came here to civilize them, these were barbarians, savages, Etc. I mean, later the narratives come to, to, to give you a fairy tale. But if you read the letters of Hernán Cortés or the letters of Pizarro, you know, Cortés went to, to conquer uh, Mexico, no? And Pizarro went to Peru, you know, to conquer over there. That, I'm using names so you, you know what I'm talking about, but that's, those are not the names, okay? These are also colonial names, okay?
okay? Uh, it, what we call Mexico to, today uh, was uh, Teotihuacan, or, you know, they have other names, you know? Or what we call Peru was Tahuantinsuyo, etc. It was other names, nothing like what we know today. But if I tell you this, you don't know what I'm talking about, okay? So the same with al -Andalus. Many people say, al -Andalus? what is that? Well, it's the south of Spain, okay? So I had to use contemporary colonial terms for, for, to understand each other because we are all being very colonized, you know, so nobody can escape that, okay? So, uh, and so we have to use things that, that are nonsense when you think about the history of these places. But anyway, uh, what happened was that uh, So what happened is uh, 